Hello everyone and welcome to Deconstructing the Image. Today we've got Louise Hager, who's one of our AOP accredited photographers. Louise is a food photographer mostly, and she'll be talking to us today about uh, collaboration in her work and storytelling through food. Um, I'm going to leave it up to Louise now and she's going to take us through the next half an hour talking about her practice. Cool. Hi Kevin, hi everyone, and um, thanks for tuning in. Um, I wanted to start talking about my practice um, and what I get really excited about as a food photographer, um, and that is obviously sharing the food to make it look as delicious as possible. Um, but I'm really interested in storytelling through food um, and how we connect through um, either collective memories or like shared experiences. Um, one of the favourite things that I uh, really love about food is that it doesn't you don't really need to share the same language um, everyone can enjoy an experience um, through eating together uh, and sitting around a table so um, yeah I think that's what I'm most excited about uh, when I work as a food photographer um, but the project that I wanted to share all the two projects really that I wanted to talk about um, is predominantly about collaboration um, and how I work um, is very much a collaborative way with um, a feed stylist and a prop stylist or um, an art director who um, whoever has the idea but just like bringing a team together um, to tell a story through food. I've been shooting for probably like 15 years. I started off as a still life photographer and um, so I studied photographic arts and I was really into um, documenting uh, still life like moments and memories really um, around my grandmother's home and I got into making photo books myself uh, to present the work. I really like that relationship um, that's quite um, quiet and intimate with the viewer um, and I like the pace that you can have of um, sharing that narrative visually with a book. Um, so yeah I used to work as a still life photographer and then from assisting I assisted a feed photographer um, on a cookbook and that just blew my mind. Um, I couldn't believe that that was his job. It was just such a wonderful small team um, shooting these beautiful recipes, uh, which we got to eat as well, which was amazing. And then, um, yeah, you'd have a book at the end of it um, as like the end of the project. So um, yeah, I started shooting um, and testing to build a portfolio with the food styling assistant um, and then went from there really making the rounds of my portfolio. Um, but yeah, at uni, I thought I wanted to be um, an art photographer, um, but wasn't really sure like, as a career, how that would go about. So um, when I discovered food um, and being able to work on cookbooks, um, that just seemed like a wonderful way to uh, unify like storytelling, um, being around food as well and um, books. Um, but yeah, growing up, cause um, I'm half Chinese, uh, <laughs> everything revolves around food really. So my mum would always say like, um, are you hungry? Rather than like, how are you? Um, you communicate and you show love through food. So. Um, most of my memories really growing up with family and stuff is always um, around the dinner table. Very loud, uh, lots of dishes. Um, yeah, like being small and having food um, put on your plate is like, this is the best prawn or like, this is the nicest piece of fish. And um, was just an act of showing love and just um, the abundance really of like, do you want a second helping or like have more? Um, yeah, so I just think working in food is just a very um, like nourishing not because just food is nourishing, but just like the environment, the people that it attracts is just like a really wonderful um, environment to be a part of, I think. So um, yeah, I really love my job. Um, it doesn't really feel like work. Um, it's just really joyous being on set with people. Um, a couple of images from cookbooks that I photographed last year, they were published this year. Um, and I was really fortunate with the publishers that commissioned me and um, that they really trusted the team and I, um, who worked on them. Uh, both the authors, they were very personal books. One was about um, the author's heritage um, and the family recipes. And another one was about memories and like their memories growing up um, and just healing through cooking really and food. So one of them is Lara Lee's cookbook, Coconut and Sambal. Um, and this is uh, an image from it, uh, which is her grandmother's thousand layer cake recipe. Um, and this was an amazing, this was um, a double page spread. So we had the cake in its entirety uh, as a slice so you could see all the layers. Um, and this is one of my favorite images from the book because um, I was really into looking at repetition. Um, and I love the, uh, the abundance of this picture, but it's still being very graphic. Um, I like that it's uh, 
really hearing the colour brown as well um, with the pink background, but those were nods to Lara's grandmother's home and all the little um, notes. And then you've got her recipe, her handwritten recipe uh, that her grandmother did at the bottom for it. Um, so that was a really wonderful uh, project to be a part of. And then the other one um, is John Partridge's uh, There's No Taste Like Home. So um, recipes there is like um, a chocolate talk cake, uh, and that's his um, father, a photo of his father. Um, this is Johnny's Christmas sponge. So it's about creating these scenes um, that are meant to depict his memories, um, which is just really fun. Um, and we photographed that in his home. And then this is one of my favorite images um, that I shot last year of uh, Knickerbocker Glory. It's just his childhood memories of um, enjoying those when he was younger. Um, but I really like um, the element of mess as well, where um, you've got that anticipation with the sauce running down and just some of the um, biscuit crumb at the top that's just like tumbled down. For me, that just makes like a really um, delicious looking image that you can't wait to get stuck in. Um, stuck into so that's like one of the things that I really love as a food photographer um, for things not to look too perfect and um, that they look real um, and just really delicious okay so the project I'd like to talk about um, now is like one of my um, favorite personal projects this is a collaboration that I photographed in New York um, in at the end of 2017 actually but we uh, published it uh, self-published it in 2018 but um, it's with food stylist Victoria Granoff who um, is an amazing uh, artist who works with food um, she's so much more than a food stylist but um, she's like a like a food powerhouse um, and she used to collaborate with Irvin Penn but um, I was introduced to her uh, when I was out there in New York um, and she told me a story about uh, a carp that was in a bathtub um, and she asked if I'd like to ever do a test shoot with her so I said that it very much had to be uh, that story like it had to be because I couldn't stop thinking about it so um yeah we shared a Pinterest board and then uh, a carp in the tub sorry is about um, the adoption of her infant son from Ukraine so these are pictures which are memories of that time um associated with food so uh, the image that's on the screen is um jars of pickled tomatoes with a chihuahua uh, because uh all of the images they have little head notes as an introduction um in the book but um this is the memory where she stayed in the um nurses nurse from the orphanage's flat and then she had like so many jars of pickled tomatoes that would just like explode randomly from the pressure and they had this uh, chihuahua that would just like bark incessantly and um, so all the images like this and then you've also got whole skinny chicken um, which is about uh, cooking. Uh, the nurse called Natalia uh, used to make borscht. So this is the chicken stock to make the uh, recipe, um, which is here. And this is um, something that we ate for lunch actually, which is really delicious. But um, yeah, each image, there's a, it's a series of seven images um, relate to a memory at that time. So this is food that she would eat uh, while she was out there. And this was um, in 2005, uh, late winter, when she went out to adopt Theo. But um, yeah, it was just really wonderful. Like we wanted to depict um, these memories and then she loved the images so much that she wanted to write recipes for them. And I just thought that was the most perfect way to um, show and share the work, to have it as a book. So um, yeah, I got in touch with um, a designer that I work with regularly called Owen Evans, who's just fantastic. Um, and Jojo Lee is the prop stylist on this, who just um, created like these worlds within Victoria's apartment in New York. Um, so this is her actual kitchen. Um, and then it's got a board um, to add atmosphere that Jojo um, made up. Um, but that's actually Victoria's uh, kitchen worktop and her stove. Um, this is another part of her house as well. And then um, this is her bathroom with the carp in the tub, um, which is the story of how you would buy a carp quite small um, at Easter uh, to have just before Easter. And then you would grow it. So the idea is that the carp grows to what it's um, living in. So it's like a story of her having to um, fish out this carp and put it in a bucket and then wash the bath and have a shower. And each time she'd have to put the carp back in the bathtub, which was just like crazy. So in the end, she ended up just putting the um, carp in a big bucket of water because she just couldn't face fishing it out every day. So it was just like a really um, sweet story and memory of that time, um, which is still to do with food. But um, yeah, I just thought it was a really wonderful way to um, share it. Um, and this is a, um, the poster actually for carp. Um, because I couldn't decide on a layout um, and because there was three of us in the project we were sort of torn really of how we wanted to share it so um, a carp in the tub is a fold out which reveals this poster 
Um, so um, you open it up to reveal the carp, which I think is a really fun way to interact with the work as well. Um, and it's printed on this really beautiful Bible paper as well. So it's really thin, but the um, image doesn't show through to the other side. But I just thought that quality and that experience of um, reading and reading the head notes, which um, explain the image underneath and touching the paper, like the feel of it is just so um, beautiful and delicate. The smell of it as well, where you have the ink um, and then just having that interaction of um, unfolding to see um, the carp, which is what the story is about, um, was really wonderful. And then Owen also did a second design, which um, is interactive because you flip it. So you've got um, a carp in the tub written in English and then a carp in the tub written in Ukrainian. Um, and then one side has the essay explaining um, the story. And then when you flip it over, so this is the essay, you have... Um, the recipes as well and they're all working recipes which is just like yeah it's just a really wonderful way I think to share a project and sort of feels like a cookbook but it isn't um because it's more storytelling led um but yeah I just love I really love working that way um to involve food but um just to learn about that person or um the story that they want to share um, but a carp in the tub, uh, I submitted that into Arl last year, um, and this image, whole skinny chicken, was a finalist uh, for the British Journal of Photography's Open Walls competition for Home and Away. Um, yeah, and that was exhibited there last summer, which was just like incredible because um, yeah, they printed it really beautifully. And when you walked in, um, a lot of people said that they could remember their grandmother's kitchens, even if they weren't um, Ukrainian. It's just like little details that um, help you remember stuff from your childhood. And I think that's a really nice way to connect through food. Um, so another project that I'd like to talk about is my most recent collaboration. And that's with the creative director, Lydia Pang. Um, I didn't know Lydia uh, personally, I knew of her and I followed her on Instagram, um, but I heard her speaking on Jen Fletcher's The Messy Truth podcast. Um, and she mentioned her Hucker heritage um, and the art of collaboration. Um, so then I looked her up um, on an interview for Ladies Wine and Design. Um, and she spoke about her family heritage and also the recipes um, and her coming back to Wales because she lives in America, um, learning about them from her grandmother and her dad. Um, yeah, just like learning to cook those recipes really. So she's half Chinese and so am I. She's half Welsh and I'm half English, but the recipes that she spoke of, there were similarities to what I've experienced growing up as well. So I was really intrigued and I really wanted to um, photograph them for her, but I didn't know her. So I direct messaged her on Instagram and then I followed up on um, email as well, just to sort of show that I was legit and hopefully she would see it and read it. Um, but I was a bit nervous because um, my work's very colorful and um, she's a goth. So a lot of her work, like she really heroes black and contrast. Um, but I really wanted to show that I could um, communicate the storytelling, uh, or I hoped I could, um, of her family heritage and recipes. So um, yeah, she uh, wrote me back and then we met up when she was in London and um, it went from there really. Like when she went back to America, uh, we spoke a lot. We had a lot of WhatsApp chat and video chat and um, we shared mood boards on Pinterest and Google as well. Um, and it was very much her art direction um, of what she wanted to capture. So um, from sharing so many mood boards, uh, we narrowed down what I thought was realistic that we could produce. And she chose the hero recipes that she wanted to photograph that really showed um, like growing up in Wales and her um, grandparents and her dad cooking. So um, yeah, we made a zine um, and I was gonna travel to America to shoot it, but then I thought it made more sense to do it here with my team. So um, I photographed the project with uh, food stylist Valerie Berry, uh, prop stylist and like set designer Alexander Breeze, um, who I shoot with loads. Um, and then we had um, Song Soo Kim, who assisted uh, Valerie and Sam Reeves, who assists me as well. And he did the retouching on the project. Um, and we photographed it in Alex's home um, in Brixton, which was um, amazing. But obviously uh, Liv Lydia's in Portland, so she's eight hours behind. So we really had to make sure that we were aligned with the art direction. So we had numerous calls, everything was signed off. We shared a mood board with Alex and Valerie, um, but she was really generous because she was like, I really want you to bring what you think and like your personality and style to this too. Um, and Valerie, uh, she really loves uh, Chinese cuisine, um, but she just is such an artistic food stylist. Um, 
when she does something like it's just right it's just enough um, and I think that's an amazing um, thing to be around to like witness that so I don't know it was just like one of the best days I've ever had on set it just didn't feel like work at all it was we it was, yeah I say it all the time like when I share the pictures um, on my stories and um, on my Insta grid that we just worked in perfect synergy it was just an amazing day um, and we all felt it like you could feel the energy from one another where it just flowed and it just um, everything worked like we just um knew and when you work with someone regularly like I work with Alex regularly but with Valerie as well like I trust her completely so you didn't really communicate that much really it's just like what recipe are we doing next it's like we had a sheet plan um like you would do on a normal sheet but it just um yeah it just flowed like what he wanted to put in the shot uh was aligned with uh Lydia's um memories and also like the zine was very um punk it was very uh black and red and white high contrast the red is nods to um like Chinese uh culture where red is lucky but also like because uh it's very meat based um food how we eat is um a nod to like the visceral nature of like the chili oil or like blood red or the meat color um so yeah those three colors are key really um so yeah Alex nailed that with his prop styling um and just like Valerie's uh the lightness of her touch really it just really shows but um we'd photographed I think three recipes by the time uh Lydia had woken up at like 6 a.m or something um but she was thrilled and then like we got to eat the um char siu uh that we photographed the um stinky rice and the duck that uh yeah her family recipes and that was just an amazing way to connect to the project further really because we got to taste what she had tasted growing up so I thought that was just a really lovely like unity and um, that we could all share together and um, so I'm going to share some pictures from that project now um so yeah so this is the cover of Eat Bitter um and Lydia's husband Rue Williams designed it um this is a tattoo that uh, Lydia actually has, which says eat bitter. And the whole premise of that is like you um, endure hardship and the rewards are sweeter. So um, yeah, it's like you get up early to soak rice or um, the duck recipe takes three days. It's not like how we live now where everything's instantaneous and the rewards and the gratification is instant. It's um, something that you have to graft for, uh, which is resonant with Hakka culture. So um, yeah, this scene was just a really great way to communicate that through food with the recipes that I shot, but also um, Lydia's words. So she wrote an introduction and started this um, in August, 2019. Um, and it talks about the Hakka spirit um, and just her culture and the environment of her growing up and just her childhood memories. Um, and then, this is one of the recipes that we photographed uh, called Radiator Char Siu. Um, and this is what we got to eat at lunch, which was like the softest, like it just melted in the mouth. It was just like so buttery and delicious. Um, but I photographed this last December and then Chinese New Year's in January. So we knew that we wanted the zine to come out later because Lydia had to work on it and write more text and do the sketching and things. Um, so yeah, we did two recipe cards um, as like a preview to the zine. We got those printed in Portland and um, <clears throat> in the zine itself, the paper is matte and it's textured. Um, so you have that feeling again, like you did with carp. It's a completely different paper texture, but it's just that um, slight roughness to it um, that you feel the craft of the paper and the printing. And then for the recipe pages, all of them are UV spot gloss. So they're so shiny and glossy, like with the black, you can see your face in it. Like, um, I don't know, like a MacBook Pro uh, reflection where you can see yourself. Um, yeah, it's just um, adds another element to the work, I think, because um, it just reflects that visceral nature um, of the work where it's like high shine, the gloss or the oil, um yeah that really shows through so on the recipe cards that we sent out in those lucky red envelopes um Chinese New Year you get given those with money inside um if you're a child um so yeah we wanted that to be a nod to the Chinese culture and then um Lydia's friend um Henry Chung he is a calligrapher and he designed the eat bitter um 
logo that we have and um, the calligraphy so uh, Rue who's a designer he made that on his 3d printer um a stamp so I think we did a thousand print runs so all of them like it's a real labor of love uh, this project because her family were over at Christmas time so they helped put all the um recipe cards in the envelopes all of them were hand stamped um so yeah it was just like this there's real love that's gone into this project and I hope that people feel that and um from seeing people shipping it out like the zine um I'm choosing all the zines so that they are uh, as perfect as possible to put them in the envelope I'm doing the um eat bit of branding with the tape um or my husband John knows he's very good at that as well because I was like a one-woman post office at one point shipping them out but um yeah he uh did that with me which I'm so thankful for because I, I think yeah we've sold out now which is crazy so there's like over a thousand copies like around the globe um of this scene so um yeah like inside is stories so these are um pictures that Lydia's taken I've just done the recipe photos and she's done all the behind the scenes stuff so this is her grandfather and um, her gung gung um, so he's explaining or she's explaining the story um of growing up uh, with her grandparents and like cooking this food um so these are part of the sample pages this is a sketch that I think her dad has done um to say like how you would do it um so this is just like a really interesting way to do a recipe as well like you have the storytelling aspect and then you have the sketching rather than photography um yeah and this is her dad chopping it up so they did lots of cooking when she was in Wales um which was amazing um, and then this is a shot that I did where you would use a paintbrush to brush um, the sauce on to the meat. Um, so that's just like a really nice detail. Um, and then there's like a really nice grain that's put on there as well as like a nod to film, but also just like, again, emphasizing texture and just making it um, try and make it look as delicious as possible. So that it feels like you can um, interact with it, really, not just with your eyes, but you have that real feeling that you can um, like touch as well. Um, and I think you really get that when you hold something in your hands, it makes it feel more tangible um and that you can relate to it a bit more because um it's in the order of how we want to tell the story but you can dip in and out i don't know it's interactive so i think it's a really nice way to share the project um and then this is her grandmother her pawpaw her grandmother's sponge cake um and we photograph that because you steam it so we photograph that through um steamed up glass i thought that would be a really nice way um to show that element so you can see that in the bottom right hand corner um, and I think there's like six egg yolks that go into it. So yeah, we wanted to show that. Um, but I really love like how um, beigey brown this image is, um, which is like not really what I do because most of my work is like high color, but I find this image like really comforting. Um, so yeah, that's um, Lydia's grandmother's sponge. Um, this is her grandmother. Um, and she did have feedback. So this is the story about how growing up she would eat this cake um, as a special thing on Tuesday. Um, and then, yeah, just some text of like, she had feedback. Don't ever open the lid because you don't want the steam to go. Um, and then the detail as well, just showing like the red again, that punk aspect and then just a nod to Chinese culture. Um, and that was the conclusion. Um, so yeah, I think that's just really prevalent now um, of what's going on in the world. Um, and then also, sorry, I had one more image to share, which was um the back of the recipe card so yeah that was the back of the recipe card to give you the recipe um as part of like Chinese New Year the preview to the zine lucky red envelope um and this was in a matte paper and then when you flipped it over it was the UV spot gloss which was the sponge cake so that was like on the other side um and that was for you to keep or as some people have done they've like um tagged us and like have it um displayed in their kitchen which is really nice so it's almost like a little print that they can keep um, which was really lovely. I really want to convey that like there's so much love that's gone into this project. Yeah. Um, it's obviously working the time difference as well. They're eight hours behind. So doing all the admin side of it as well, like having the um, proofs of the zine. So they got sent to me. We printed it here uh, with the printers called Push Print who um, are in South London um, and they were recommended. And um, yeah, Rue did the design. Uh, and then obviously it's Lydia's family recipes but um, yeah all of us worked like really long hours because we're all working other jobs and um, just like doing the proofs me having to do like whatsapp videos as well to show them and like rub and <laughs> rub the paper so they can hear like an idea like the noise and the texture of it and like um, trying to zoom in as well um, to see like any grain or if they're happy with that 
Um, but Lydia and Rue were really generous because I work um, in print quite a lot with the cookbooks. Um, they were saying that they just trusted me and to go with what I was happy with. So um, yeah, there was like a little bit of pressure as well because obviously I want to get it right for her um, and her family because it's like honouring that really. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's so thrilled with it. Um, and so am I really. Like it's just such a um, wonderful thing that we've made. Um, and it's just so good to like hold it physically as well. But um, I really love that it's like the matte paper and then it's like the change in flow or the pace of the book where you have the UV spot gloss. Um, it adds a bit of luxe as well, but um, people have commented that they just like really love it because it just makes it all look so much more visible um, and like ties in with the imagery and the story really well. So that's really nice. Okay, so um, yeah, I mean, it was so exciting when um, we got our proofs through after um, deciding on the paper um, and yeah, just seeing like the um, proof, like to hold it physically um, in our hands. So yeah, this is a copy um, of Eat Bitter, um, which we're just like both so thrilled about. And um, this is Lydia's hand. Um, and this is her tattoo, her real tattoo that she got um, done in China, I think, that says Eat Bitter. Um, but yeah, it's just, um, gosh, trying to flick on camera. Um, yeah, I just love it. So you can see um, some of the pages that I spoke about, but you can see like there's, matte paper um and then there's also the uv spot gloss um which is just we're so like thrilled with because um it's just so so glossy um yeah you can see my skylight um but yeah like this, this is a fatty pork recipe and to me they just look like jewels um of meat um this is very meaty this book but um yeah I mean we we do eat a lot of meat um but it's just so comforting as well like all these recipes I think um will bring you real comfort um but yeah the uh this is Dippy chicken as well this is like one of my faves um of the chicken in the pot um but yeah a lot of the imagery like is quite dark but you can still see like the detail of the oil which I think is really lovely um and yeah, it's just like a change in pace really, where you can like touch the different textures. So like the photos that Lydia did of her dad, like you can see there, like the grain, it's just really beautiful. Um, and I love that it's a bit interactive again, where you can like flip it and turn it and then, yeah, just like the break in text to have like this, the double page spread. Um, and then you see her grandmother's eye as well. It's just, um, yeah, all this detail is just really wonderful. Um, so we're really pleased with that. And then these were the Chinese New Year um, preview recipe cards um, that are hand stamped. So, yeah, I mean, loads of people have said that they can feel the love um, that's come with this. Um, so this is the gloss. And then that's the matte side of the recipe card, which has got um, some calligraphy on as well. And it also, I think, links to, yeah eatbetter.co which is our website that you can um, purchase the zine uh, we have sold out actually of the zine um, there's over a thousand copies which is just incredible that's like around the globe so people from oh god like Australia and S South America and um, South Korea and everywhere just like all over the globe have like supported this which is just incredible and we're so grateful because um a profit a percentage of the profit goes to welcome to chinatown the uh, charity uh, that supports um businesses that are affected by covid um which is just really wonderful that we've been able to do that um, and we're so thankful for everyone that supported this thing to help um contribute to them um but yeah it's just um we've got some copies left that uh weren't the uh a grade ones that have got slight dinks in them so where you can see like there's a little bit of fluff in the top bit there before it got the coating on the cover and um, which is something that we learned actually through the whole process of making that even though it looked pristine when we put it in the envelope um when it moves around in the postal system um because these weren't coated because we wanted that matte effect um they've slightly rubbed and become a little bit fluffy. So there's like a, a few fluffy ones left um, if anyone wants to go to the website and buy because like they're still really beautiful, I think. Um, and yeah, that would just be really ace. Um, but yeah, you can go online um, and find out more about it as well. Um, and you can also see that there's other merch like um, Lydia did a collaboration with Expert Horror and she's got some Eat Bitter t-shirts, which are really fun. Um, and I've got one of those as well. Um, so yeah, I think it's really cool. Um, so yeah, just like to summarise really, like my work is very much about collaboration, how I make the work and how I make my images um, is very much with other people. Um, I very rarely shoot anything on my own. 
Um, the last thing that I did sort of shoot on my own really was um, a lockdown project that I did uh, with Victoria Granoff again. Um, he's based in New York. I was um, supposed to be in New York in April, but obviously because of COVID that wasn't possible. Um, so we were having a FaceTime chat and she was telling me that she was um, bartering goods in New York, which I thought was really funny. Um, and I thought that would be a really good project. So um, yeah, as part of doing like a remote collaboration where I could still create and not be with her to style the food we thought it'd be fun to photograph uh what she'd been bartering so we shared the photography she did half of it and I did half of it um, and she shot it on her iPhone and her son um I asked her to ask him to show her how to make it um the highest quality that it could be so then we could print from it so yeah we made a zine um which was really fun called uh barter baby um and Owen Evans uh, was the designer again. So um, yeah, this is the cover of Barter Baby. Um, and I really like that the cover's green because it's kind of that nod to like money, like uh, the US dollar bill. Um, and Victoria again wrote recipes. Um, I really love Owen's design here. Uh, we printed it with a newspaper club um, who I think are based in Glasgow. Um, but yeah, we used newsprint. We used um, the digital print run rather than traditional. Um, Eat Bitter was printed on a um, traditional press, a lithography press, uh, which is incredible to see that go through. Um, but Newspaper Club uh, advised us because the green was so vivid for the cover that it might bleed through onto the other paper. So um, yeah, we did digital printing instead. So that was just really interesting uh, to learn about the process. But Owen's design is just um, fantastic because it's showing um, the way it's laid out. The text is like you're having a conversation. So I think that's really fun how you like turn your head to like read either side um, is a really fun way to interact with the work. Um, and then, yeah, uh, Victoria had captions underneath the images like she did for carp just to explain what we're looking at. So, um, yeah, as in lockdown, everyone was making sourdough. So this is um, Victoria's sourdough starter that she photographed in New York. And then I photographed the crumpet rings that were hanging on the outside gate in New York as the exchange um, for the starter. And um, yeah, randomly, these are my mum's crumpet rings that she probably has never ever used and randomly found in her cupboard um, because I thought she must have them because my mum keeps everything. Uh, so yeah, that was really fun. And I photographed that on my dining room table. So that's an example of me sort of working by myself and doing some styling. Um, and then these, are chocolates that uh, Victoria was gifted and she photographed those. I photographed some hand sand um, on a chair at home. Again, like working on my own, um, I couldn't get any of the um, flowers that she was given, unfortunately. So I can only get carnations um, in April. So um, these are just from the supermarket uh, with a latex glove. And then this is a carrot soup that she photographed because she had like so much of that in her freezer. Um, and she gives a recipe as well for that. Um, this is kimchi that I photographed that my friend who uh, works in our local or owns rather our local cafe here um, called Halex. Um, she very kindly gave me this kimchi so it's a real like collaborative like community project now because um yes yeah, I didn't have any so she um gave me some so I could photograph and um Victoria exchanged that for some ramps um from the farmer's market so that's her photographing that there um toilet roll uh, randomly I saw this toilet roll um, in my off license and I thought it was amazing it's really rubbish toilet roll like it just would disintegrate I imagine but it's just like look at it it's just fantastic um so yeah I photographed the toilet roll love the color and um, she had the ramp beans uh or gordo bean club sorry rather the dried beans and um, that she photographed at home uh, which I thought was just like a really fun story that she explains in the zine um, and this is her friend Erica who did the exchange of flour to make some rye bread and um, so I photographed the bread and then she did that photograph there on the left um, but I thought that was just a really fun way to collaborate and it just shows that you don't have to be in the same country um, to work with someone or someone that you admire you could just reach out to them um, with Instagram which I think is like the real power of social media at the moment is that it enables you to start conversations um, with whoever you like really, whoever you admire or just want to drop them a message, whether it's in comments or a DM, just to say like, I love what you do. I have this idea and I'd love to work with you. Um, I think it's just like important to, yeah, just to connect and to reach out because everything is virtual, but you can create something and make work that's really beautiful. Um, even if you're not in the same room. Um, so yeah, this was a project that I did um, that I really love. Um, and uh where is it sorry stop share um that's it here um so yeah this is like newsprinty 
feel um, very different to Eat Bitter. Um, so you can see how it's printed. It's just not as contrasty. It's, um, the saturation isn't as uh, strong. But um, yeah, it's got a really nice feel. So again, it's just interacting. And then Owen's really clever design where he's got these lines relate to the back cover where you can see the goods that were bartered because it lines up. So I just think, yeah, like it's just really wonderful to collaborate with people because you focus on your skill and yeah, you just work together brilliantly to just sort of like lift each other up um, and to produce work that, um, yeah, you couldn't, I couldn't do on my own at all. Um, so I think collaboration is just so important. Well, thanks very much, guys, for tuning in and um, taking the time to listen to me talk about my work. Um, all my projects are online. They're on my Instagram, at Louise Hager, uh, where it also links to my um, website, but also to um, other channels like Eat Bitter um, in my link tree. Um, Welcome to Chinatown and the other initiatives as well that you can um, in engage with. Um, but yeah, all the teams that I work with are credited in my pictures um, on my Instagram. Um, yeah, so like just get in touch really um, if you'd like to know more. Thanks very much.